Hey everybody, Prepper Nurse One here. Today is July 6th, uh, 2017. Got some little overcast here. The sun's trying to peek out behind the clouds, but uh, been partly cloudy today, but not a bad day overall. The weather's been fairly decent. So I don't know if you noticed, first thing, I trimmed this down. I just kind of got tired of it, so it was time to go. So I trimmed it all the way down to a regular goatee now. Side, it's all cleaned up and everything as well. I just was, it was getting too much and I'd had enough. So I had to change it up. I'll do that periodically. So anyway, um, the point of the video today, what I wanted to talk about, um, I'm going to get back on Yellowstone a little bit here. And uh, after my last video, you know, there was a lot of questions about different things and stuff like that. I'm not a gloom and doomer. Um, I don't make predictions. I don't say what is going to happen or when something is going to happen. But what I say always is prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Um, it's a good philosophy to have because when something does happen, and it eventually will, um, not necessarily Yellowstone, but whatever, you know, it's good to be ready for those events, um, whatever they may be. So let's get on to Yellowstone. Um, just yesterday, up in Montana, uh, just uh, northwest of uh, Yellowstone National Park, they had a 5.8 uh, earthquake up in that area, okay? Now, with all the earthquake activities, and here's one of the things I'm going to say, too. Let me get this right, right in the beginning, because somebody sent me a thing. Well, Yellowstone has between 1,000 and 3,000 earthquakes every year. You're absolutely right, but it normally does not have about 1,000 earthquakes in a three-week period of time. That is not normal, okay? So... In my opinion, as I told you guys before um, the other day, the best thing to do is monitor the situation, okay? We're going to get advance warning of what's going on if the government doesn't subvert the information and keep it down so that we don't know that it's actually happening. But um, you're going to have increased earthquake activity, and it's going to continue to get worse and worse, and you're going to have higher magnitude earthquakes, okay? Uh, before an explosion were to happen. Now, when Yellowstone does go, does it have to be worst case scenario and be total destruction type of volcano? You know, I, that I can't say. I mean, who knows? It might not be, but, uh, you know, it very well could be as well. So, like I said, we're overdue. Um, like I said before, the last earth or last event that we had was 640,000 years ago. And, uh, you know, Yellowstone has gone off three times in the last uh, two million years. And so, you know, they, they have, you know, already of, um, the art of, um, artifact type of information that they can look at through the pumice and the soil samples to be able to tell when it had gone and stuff like that. They, those guys are a lot smarter than I am, and they know the research on that. So that's, you know, that's how they know that, you know, it has gone off. Uh, three different times in the last two mil 2.1 million years, I think, it's been. So anyway, we're overdue for a Yellowstone event. Yes, we are. Okay. Now, here's the thing that I want to say. First of all, there's no reason to panic because it, if Yellowstone is going to go, there's absolutely nothing we can do to stop it from going. Okay. It's going to go. It's going to go. Okay. But the things that you can do, okay, you can keep an eye on it and keep an eye on what's going on out there and, you know, watching... Uh, you know, the news through YouTube and, and stuff like that and keeping abreast. And, and there's people that, you know, are, are on top of it all the time. And like I said, if you continue to have increased activity, now you're going to have swarms of uh, earthquakes that are going to happen periodically through the years, okay? That's going to happen, okay? But the thing is, a lot of different things that are going on right now out there makes you wonder what's really going on, okay? So that's that's my thing with with that it, it, it's it's something to ponder something to keep an eye on now what would our time frame be realistically okay so let's talk about a time frame if you had continuous increased activity with lots of um you know earthquakes and higher magnitude earthquakes and it just continued to do that a lot um it could be a month two months you know basically before it really was going to go and you would have time, if you will, to prepare as best you could. Now, how do you prepare for a Yellowstone event? Well, first of all, if you're within 100 miles of Yellowstone National Park, uh, I would suggest getting out of there because that's the kill zone. Anything within 100 miles of Yellowstone, they pretty much said is toast, okay? 
then you have you know your ash um, zone outside of that and then you have the secondary ash zone and a lot of that's going to depend on the trade winds and the, the winds blow across is ever, I mean a lot of people hope you guys realize that the winds blow from the west across to the east most of the time okay so you're you're going to have a lot of stuff going up into the upper atmosphere when Yellowstone does go so once the Yellowstone goes you're going to have a lot of death and destruction in the immediate area now I'm on the east coast okay I think I'm about a little over 12,000 miles away from Yellowstone event how does it affect me okay here's a good example of how it affects me first of all we may here in this area um, in New York might be looking at maybe an inch of ash okay that you know you think no that's not too bad it's not terrible it's what happens after that about six weeks after Yellowstone goes up and has put so much stuff into the upper atmosphere it's going to block the sun out okay and it's going to affect the temperatures on the planet okay and, if, and when that happens you're going to have um, now I had said in a previous video I called it a nuclear winter it's a volcanic winter okay now it's the same freaking thing as a nuclear winter except this would be because of the volcano so we'll go with the volcanic winter just so that people don't go jumping down my throat calling it the wrong thing so what's in a volcanic winter you would be looking at minimum of three years of basically straight winter because the temperatures would be cooled so much on the earth and it would have that effect because it was so much stuff would be put up into the upper atmosphere it's going to uh, act as a shield to basically put us in another ice age okay how long that would you know continue to be past three years I don't know I mean I'm not an expert but you basically would be looking at a minimum of about three years of realistically no Sun okay or very minimal Sun you're basically looking at no um, no spring no summer you're just basically looking at a really cold temperatures for a very long time now how do you survive that do you say well if you have some kind, some kind of facility underground, like the government does and the power elite do, you can survive it, okay? Now what about for us, the average citizen? Now if we get that warning and we know that it's going to be coming and we have uh, a window, and then when that happens, guys, and here's what's going to happen, okay, realistically, government's going to lock everything down. They would declare martial law and they would take control of everything and, uh, you know, the food supplies and so people weren't, you know, um, going nuts and just buying all kinds of food you'd be limited to what you could get that's why they're not going to tell us until the last possible minute that something is going to happen because they don't want to cause panic and that's and that's realistic I mean and that makes a lot of sense okay but the thing is you know it's complete devastation realistically um, the last super volcano that went off was Toba which was 70,000 years ago um, I said this in the previous video that I did on Yellowstone as well. The world population at that point, after that event, they did they done scientific studies with DNA and stuff like that on the bones of people after that event. And basically what they figured out is the world population was down to about 10,000 people after that event. That was the last super volcano that went, okay? And so then, you know, you're looking at, you know, Billions and billions of people would not make it realistically. Okay, so how does the average citizen survive such an event? You would have to group up big time. You would have to get underground shelters built, underground shelters stocked with food, fresh water. Um, and when I say stocked with fresh water, I'm talking about thousands and thousands of gallons of fresh water. You would be, you know, looking at trying to get grow lights to be able to try to still grow something underground um, so you can have some plants and stuff like that you know and everything that would be very very important to have okay uh, you know so these are these are things to really think about okay I mean it's and I don't do this guys to scare you I'm not trying to scare anybody I don't want to have anybody freaking panicking right now there's no reason to panic right now um, Yellowstone could go off a month from now it could go off a thousand years from now I mean there's no telling I mean you just you don't know the thing is like I've said before you want to monitor the situation now there's a lot more pressing things going on in our world that I would be more concerned about at this exact point in time than Yellowstone um, National Park and a super volcano there definitely is okay 
but you want to, you know, it's something to keep an eye on. Because like I said, they're not going to share that information with us. They're not going to keep, they're going to keep us in the dark. They're going to treat us like a mushroom, okay? You know what you do with a mushroom? You feed them crap and you keep them in the dark. That's what they're going to do. They're going to do a lot of disinformation. And so then that way they can keep things as normal as they can for as long as they can. That's the reality of it. That's what's going to happen, okay? And when people do realize what's going on, it would be complete and utter mass panic. Best thing you can do is the best you can do. I mean, I, that sounds terrible and it's a horrible analogy, but there's only so much you're going to be able to do. Uh, you would want to, like I said, you're going to want to look at trying to get something underground because you don't, you're not going to want to be out in that cold. You're not going to want to be. And you're going to have a whole bunch of people that are going to be panicking. And that first initial period of time is the most dangerous period of time because that's when you get scared people um, and people that are terrified they're very dangerous at that point guys they really truly are so if you're a prepper and you're already prepping that's awesome keep doing what you're doing okay you know I at this point in time I do not have anything underground okay but if I had to do it believe me I would do it um, you know we would do what we had to do to survive but uh, you know it, it's it's a scary situation and uh, you got to think about that you're going to have some time once that thing happens you know once it's building up and you know it's building up then it's time to make a move. If you live out in the Midwest someplace, out near Yellowstone, it's time to get out of that area, you know. And if you have underground stuff and things ready, then that's great. But, uh, you know, I know like Montana um, and up in there and that whole area of the country, there's a lot of preppers up in that area, you know. Um, South Dakota, all those areas, there's a lot of preppers out in that area. And that's awesome. But the thing is, you got to look at where you are in correlation to that super volcano if that's the event that happens. But like I said, there's a lot more things that would be more pressing on my mind to worry about other than that. Continuing to prep, continuing to get ready is way, way more important. You know, again, guys, don't panic. Don't live in fear. We can't live in fear. We have to still enjoy life. We have to have our day to day activities that we do. And that's, you know, that's really, really important too. We can't live in fear. Life is too short. Remember, I've, I talk about this all the time. Life is too short to be unhappy. Don't live in fear. Enjoy your life. But at the same time, be smart, be prudent, continue to prep, continue to get ready, because it could be any number of things that could happen. I mean, my God, there could be like a super bug that came out that killed off a bunch of people. That could be an event that happens. That's a realistic thing that could possibly happen. An economic collapse, that's a realistic event that could actually happen. Uh, the power grid going down for whatever reason, absolutely realistic expectation. Let's hope we're not going to be at some kind of nuclear war with anybody because that would be a horrible, horrible thing. But, uh, you know, you just you don't know. And uh, so, you know, these are things that you got to think about. There's so many different things going on. But like I said, I wanted to try to alleviate people's fears about the Yellowstone event because realistically you're going to have some time once you know it's coming. Um, you're going to have time to get out of where you're at, out of that area, you know, so that you can get yourself to a safer pli a place and hopefully have people that you can work with. Um, panic is not the answer. It never really truly is. Um, living in fear is not the answer because it doesn't change anything, guys. Yellowstone is going to do what it's going to do when it's going to do it, okay? So I, I wanted to make this second video to talk about these things and to try to clear some things up and, and try to explain to people that... Uh, you know, we don't have to live in fear. Um, you know, continue to be smart, continue to prep, continue to do the best you can. Now, you're going to say to me, Ed, man, I don't have three years worth of food. Well, I don't have three years worth of food, okay? But, uh, you know, it's, uh, you're going to do the best you can do. And if something does happen, like a Yellowstone event, um, here's the thing, you know, at some point, Yellowstone is going to go. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about that. That is a freaking reality. That is going to happen at some, at some point. When? I have no idea. Okay? I don't make those predictions because I don't know. But I think it's smart to keep an eye on Yellowstone. Just like it's smart to keep an eye on what else is going around the world as far as, you know, volcanic activity. You know, especially, I mean, Yellowstone is a sleeping giant. It's not even really sleeping. It's a very active sleeping giant. So it's something to keep an eye on, something to continue to monitor, and just kind of go from there. I mean, it's just, we don't know what's going to happen, okay? We don't know when something's going to happen. But being safe and being smart is the key, guys, okay? Don't live in fear. Just continue to get ready. 
keep an eye on it. That's what I've said in another video, and I'm going to say it again now. Keep an eye on Yellowstone. It's something to watch. If you see increased volcanic or uh, earthquake activity, then it's time to start getting nervous, okay? Then you amp it up, you know? It's still, maybe that gives you an advantage over a lot of people that aren't paying attention to what's going on. But you keep it, keep up doing what you got to do, and you're going to be fine. Now, as I, I'm going to leave this video, I'm showing you the garden here real quick, and it is freaking doing great. Uh, the tomatoes are just absolutely doing awesome. And the onions are doing fantastic. And the cantaloupe are right there. They're all freaking rocking. And on the other side is the uh, cucumbers. They're doing great, too. So, And the peppers are starting to come up. So, anyway, guys, listen. I'm going to jump off of here. I hope this helps. I hope this gives some people some peace of mind. Uh, like I said, it's like I, I don't want to cause panic. That's not what this is about. It's about just being observant, being ready, and continuing to do what you've been doing if you're prepping. And if you haven't been prepping, get started because it's never too late, okay? Remember, guys, hug and kiss the ones you love. Tell them every day. Tomorrow is not guaranteed. We never know what's going to happen. And remember, STD, one step at a time, one thing at a time, and one day at a time, okay? Whatever you're trying to do, whatever you're trying to accomplish, you can get there as long as you just work at it methodically. And on that note, I am going to get off of here. I'm sorry for no video yesterday. I took some time with the 4th of July and yesterday and spent some time with my kids and we did some stuff. So um, I didn't do a video yesterday. But uh, i got to get caught up on comments and I will do that as well. Okay? I will talk to you all later. Prepper Nurse went out for now.